A global business update, Michael Wilson joins us now from London. Good morning, Michael. Good morning. Uh, Asia markets a little mixed this morning, but China um, outstanding, or rather standing out from the others as being uh, not not too bad. Actually, Japan's Nikkei uh, fell marginally. Consumer confidence in Australia is actually growing. Confidence rebounded. So, do you remember there was the um, the uh, reversing from a drop after the RBA the um, Royal Reserve Bank of Australia um, hiked rates earlier in the month. Um, China's domestic tourism, I think this is where a lot of the um, equity uh, exuberance is coming from, is actually up. It's good, good indicator of retail spending. This is Chinese moving within the country rather than rather than outside, and it does show signs of um, a bit of a recovery. We saw those retail that retail spending up 2.7 percent in July. Um, Chinese technology giants have been forced to share some of their algorithms with the country's very, very powerful cyber space, space regulator. Um, this includes companies from, from like Alibaba and Tencent and so on, actually sharing how they actually use the information that they have in it. And some of the rules that they want, they want to bring in there, they want to be allowing users to opt out of recommended uh, algorithms as well as requiring companies to obtain a license to provide news services. So a bit of a, um, a shake up there. Um, just a very brief note. That Asian inflation, according to a number of leading analysts, has in fact peaked. Um, uh, the average inflation peaked about five and a half percent. That's what they're saying uh, right now. That um, compares with, well, what is, what is it here? 9.1 percent, about 9 percent in the US as well, 8.5 and a half percent in the EU and so on. Thus, to the United States then, and stock futures actually doing reasonably well this morning after yesterday. Um, the 30 stock uh, index of Dow Jones up uh, um, above its 200 day moving average for the first time for quite a long time. Um, the markets actually re responded. Consumer staples, communications and consumer discretionary stocks um, rallied. But again, this is rather important information out from the United States. If you if you believe that an economy is about people actually buying houses and all the concomitant things that they actually buy as well to 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 you know to furnish them and the rest of it. Housing recession looms. The National Association of Home Builders. Um, the index dropped six points to forty nine. Anything below fifty is considered uh, negative. Um, Apple has been telling its employees now. If you remember, Apple was one of these employers that said you know that they, they, people can work from where, where they want. They're actually now saying that um, employers have to go in three days a week. There's a ghastly new phrase, which I'm going to share with you, which is called in-person work, i.e. you turn up to the office. Well, why, do, why do they have to come up with phrases like this, in-person work, how horrible that is? Anyway, it turns out that Apple employees like to go and talk to each other because that's where some of the development actually comes from. Surprise, surprise, Apple. Well, well done. Um, a, a note basically about some of the, the, the major thinking behind investment right now and that leading hedge fund, Elliott Management, you remember them, they're well known as disruptors. They dumped SoftBank, basically. Um, they did get out of Twitter as well before Elon Musk, Elon Musk rather, went back there. So they, they actually know what they're doing. Um, they've got out of SoftBank. They're not confident that it's going to restructure itself in the way that it promised um, after getting out of those um, investments we were talking about the other day. Day. Um, the Anglo-Australian miner BHP is actually soaring big, big results from them. But here's an interesting thing. It's basically on coal prices. Um, what they actually they, they got out of, um, uh, they, 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 they got out of, uh, or they spun out rather of oil and gas, uh, and they approved development of a huge potash uh, plant in Canada. They, they see China as being uh, very big for their own growth, but really on, on the back of coal, this is actually. The EU um, is in a green energy push to produce its own raw materials. What it's going to do is apparently is to reduce the regulatory um, hurdles that, that stop people mining for, for example, lithium, cobalt and graphite. You may think, well, where on earth are they going to find that in, in the EU? Answer, uh, Portugal, Balkans and Scandinavia as well. So that's, in other words, you know, to try to get over some of the, <laughs> the fossil fuel problems that they're having to cope right now. Speaking of which, in, the, in Germany, householders are facing a level of hundreds of euro on, on their gas bills. Um, now, that isn't to say that that, 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 we, that in this country it isn't facing the same kind of thing, but from a different, this is actually um, a, a complete and, uh, and levy, just rather than increased costs and so on. 
um, and, and the move has been necessary, say the Germans, to prevent the collapse of the energy market. For an average family of four, they'll be spending another 480 euro um, uh, on an average gas bill of 3,568 euro a year. Um, so that is about, I would say, about 20% increase and uh, they will have to cope with that in the same way that we do here. Uh, we've just had the jobs figures from the uh, United Kingdom. The standout for me basically is that workers are suffering um, record pace slump in fed, record inflation. Yes, they are have been, been paid more, but if you reflect inflation against that, they're actually losing out in real terms by about 4%. Um, Britain's unemployment rate held at 3.8%. Um, but there are signs that the, the super hot market here, again, we've often talked about this, not necessarily a, a, a combination of those people out of jobs, but the right people to fill the right jobs. And the number of people in employment grew about 160,000 in the April to June period. The key questions then, of course, the leadership thing is still continuing, but um, how, how, how is anybody going to actually cope with energy price rises, Labour's plan to freeze energy prices? Um, it, now, this is across all, this is what Keir Starmer, so Keir Starmer is saying, is across all, um, all, all uh, incomes and so on, rather than than just the poorer. He says it'll cost £29 billion. Pounds. We said that yesterday. Many millions, not just the hardest, uh, would find it hard to keep up payments. 28 million people will be paying £59 billion pounds more altogether. That's 2.9% of UK GDP. That's how the energy prices are actually hitting the UK um, economy. Uh, the UK is going to cut some of its import taxes as as poorer, poorer countries are concerned, that, as you will appreciate, um, applies to many countries in Africa as well. It's called the Developing Countries Trading Scheme, and it means that we will be cutting import taxes in this country on top of the thousands of products which developing nations do, some stuff from poorer nations as well, um, and 99% of goods imported from Africa. Um, as far as the UK is concerned, and Heathrow um, extended that passenger cap now to the end of October, which takes it beyond, this doesn't concern you particularly, but as far as the UK is concerned, it takes it beyond what is described as the half term holidays, when a lot of people actually tend to go away. Um, again, I, I have to say, I think it's a bit like running timetables on trains and just allowing a slightly, a sl slightly more time to complete the journey. Thus, it's being seen that most of the trains have actually run on time. Um, so a cap on the amount of takeoffs that can be from airport that's going to continue until um until october and finally and 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 again this is this is a case of last but not least uh, the, the oil price has gone down quite considerably um over the past uh over the past week over the past month and it's continuing to weaken on chinese um on on, on the lack of chinese demand and that is spurring a bit of a sell-off in commodities um including copper for example a weakness in retail sales drop in new construction um in in China. So that really is not great news as far as the world is concerned. It might be, be give, given a temporary respite from energy bills, but there's no saying that, that, that there won't, it won't pick up um, in the near future. But so far, as we, as we look at it week by week, oil is going down in price. That's the global view. Right. Okay. Uh, I'd like to talk quickly about uh, the economies of uh, developed nations like America and the likes. I wanted to bring this up yesterday. Uh, you talked about some, you know, tempering as regards the inflation numbers in America. Could it be because of uh, Biden's little push pre uh, midterm elections? Could that be the case? Is that what is happening? Or otherwise, or things are just looking up? Or because uh, logistical challenges have been eased off post COVID? Because, you know, you talked about cost of shipping reducing gradually back to pre pandemic level uh, numbers. Could that be the case? Uh, so let's let's not confuse inflation with high prices. Remember, what I'm saying all the time is that inflation is a measure of rising prices. In other words, when those prices cease to rise, then inflation goes down. Doesn't mean to say that prices aren't high. I, do, I don't think that anything that Biden is actually doing right now is, although he says he wants to reduce inflation, I don't think it's getting any push from him. I think these, 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 these increases are dropping out of the index, as economists say, I don't think it's anything to do with anything to do with that at all. I think we're, we're all facing higher prices. It may be this inflation ceases, but that is a measure of the rate of the increase in prices, not 
to show where prices are. So in other words, I suspect that the United States is, is benefiting from higher prices, but it's also benefiting from much higher employment as well, as those huge um, employment figures showed us um, a couple of weeks ago. So all, all, that's, all that's going quite well. I, I think every, anything that's happening in the United States, quite honestly, is happening by accident rather than by Biden design. That's, that, that, that's what the, the markets are telling me. Well, Michael, two quick things. China has uh, cut uh, medium lending rates by uh, 10 points, uh, 10 basis points, 2.75%. Uh, Any basis for optimism? The plan is to see if this can be used to stimulate growth and reduce the effect of uh, the lockdowns, uh, COVID and all of that, and the free fall in the housing sector. And then secondly, the UK uh, deciding to uh, cut uh, uh, rates on imports from developing countries. What are the challenges here? Yeah. Okay, red tape will be uh, reduced. And then, of course, the emphasis will be more on trade rather than aid. Uh, but you know, these developing countries, 99% of these goods coming from African countries, is there really a balance in terms of capacity here? Uh, well, it, it, uh, to, to, I, I would personally prefer trade rather than aid. I feel it's time to to wean off um, a, a lot of, a lot of aid to countries and allow them to develop themselves if that's at all possible. I know that places different sorts of pressures on different sorts of countries, and I know that's not possible all the time. Um, but if this were to encourage trade with Africa, and I, I mean, I hope, I hope. I really do hope that that, that is that is what this is about. I, I don't know. I I have no I have no inside knowledge of what civil servants actually do because they they probably don't know themselves but if, if that's what it's doing then i i feel that's rather good yes we noted the day uh, over the weekend wasn't it that the that the the pboc the people's bank of china um reduced very very slightly um the amount that banks can actually borrow the, the, the rate at which banks can actually borrow from them um it's hoped that that will go into the economy but as I said, right at the last part of the report, we are noticing a China slowdown in, in retail sales, in manufacturing, and also a drop in new construction. If it can be used to get to put the likes of Evergrande um, up, to, up to running again, then that would be good. I suspect it probably won't, but it shows that they are willing to do that. And the market's actually initially quite like that yesterday. Right. Yesterday, we talked about Keir Starmer's plans, which have been criticized because he's planning to freeze energy prices across the board, saying that it's not just the hardest up that need help, which is actually a good point. Even middle class and upper middle class might struggle. But do you think that that's going to be popular? Because the you know, common wisdom right now is to really help the most vulnerable in society. Do you think he might have shot himself in the foot there? Uh, that's that's a political point. I mean, I, I, yeah, possibly. Who knows? Um, I mean, actually, the, the real criticism about the Labour Party plans were nothing to do with where the relief is actually going to fall. It was the calculation. That made that they made about inflation. Um, as soon as they said that what that 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 that, 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 that therefore the rise in inflation would would solve some of the problems, people were saying no, it won't. It'll just add to the further gap in the debt paid that you're incurring to make these payments in the first place. So mathematically, if you believe in inflation, I happen to, um, then they, they they were they were they were shown to be fairly empty kind of promises. I mean, of course, um, you know, they're, 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 they're attracting um, political, uh, uh, political approbation. Then again, it was a political party that sent the Royal Navy to stop migrants coming across the Channel. What were they supposed to do? Act, in, act, act against international law. I mean, if you see somebody drowning, you rescue them. That's what we seafarers have done for centuries. And that doesn't matter what nationality are and yet politicians thought that that would work i don't think politicians have got many brains quite honestly i, I see that it, it's quite, it's quite, it's, it's quite, it's quite a simple thing isn't it to say that inflation is clearly um g going to erode the kind of savings that you want to make i mean that's age one isn't it oh uh, thank you mr wilson you just spoke on behalf of millions yes <laughs> thanks for your time this morning now for business updates across the african continent rotis adiri joins us 
Good morning, Rotus. Good morning, good morning. Doctor, welcome. Good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning, good morning to, to you. Studio. Good morning, Thank Refai. Good morning. So, uh, politicians don't have brains, huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Honestly. Right. Honestly. Yeah. Michael Wilson, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Um, inflation figures are out. Uh, came out uh, yesterday. The Bureau of Statistics is tweeting again. That was very refreshing. They tweeted this out. 17-year high, 19.64%. Uh, that's uh, headline inflation. Uh, look at that. That's from 18.6 back in June. Food inflation now, we've breached the 20-point barrier. We're at 22.02%. Core inflation, which strips out volatile items, 16.2%. Urban inflation, 20.09%. Uh, rural, 19.2%. Month on month, the same increases that we're seeing uh, across the board, 1.817 for headline, uh, which actually was high. The June should be 1.812. Food inflation, 2.04, core, 1.75. So, yeah, increases across the board. So, um, you know what I said? We had Bismarck Rwane on the, sh on the Global Business Report uh, last week. I asked him, this is before these numbers even came out, um, whether or not inflation, and we've talked about this before, right? Whether or not inflation reflects reality. Here's what he said about the inflation basket. The, the inflation basket is supposed to be constituted every five years. Naturally, your behavioral patterns, your, your, your demography, mm. your, in fact, your life expectancy and all of that. Yeah. So the last time changes over time. Mm. Therefore, you need to reflect that in terms of changing your consumer basket. Okay. Uh, even if it's just tweaking it a little bit. Mm. But the last time we did that was 2009. So quite frankly, going by the five-year cycle, we are due for a third review. Mm. But we haven't done anything about yeah. it. In fact, further on, you know, FTC did their own uh, 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 models where they ran what inflation could possibly be, and the numbers it came up with were scary. It's anywhere from 48% to 83. Just, <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> so, um, so there you are. Um, Central Bank of Nigeria is uh, revising upward savings deposit rates. Way back in September 2020, they revised downwards what banks would pay out on savings deposit rates because of the environment, give the banks a break, help them out with their net interest margin. So back in 2020, they released a circular, right? And the savings deposit rates, what the banks were supposed to pay out, was revised downwards from 30% of the monetary policy rate to 10%. So at the time, September 2020, the rate was, uh, NPR, monetary policy rate was 12.5. So by revising it downwards, that's the interest you pay on savings from 30% of the NPR to 10%. So 10% of 12.5, they're essentially paying out 1.25% on savings. So now they just released another circular. They're saying due to changing conditions in the economic environment, I mean, basically rates are going up. They've revised that upwards. So your monetary policy rates are 14%. They now revise it up to 30% of that. Savings rates are now at four, at least minimum, minimum 4.2%. Um, of course, with inflation at 19.6, uh, you've got a, a, a negative real rate of return of um, what, about 14.8%. So not very healthy. Um, we go to Ghana. There was a news that came out on, and Joy Online is a um, reputable. reputable, reputable news source in Ghana saying that the Central Bank of Ghana uh, was banning uh, domiciliary accounts, uh, basically opening new domiciliary accounts, which is supposed to be an extension of uh, dollar illiquidity in Ghana. So the Bank of Ghana quickly came out with a tweet uh, saying that, you know, public notice Bank of Ghana has not issued any directive to local banks to stop the opening of new dollar accounts. Now, however, we understand that there is an emergency MPC meeting that's been called for tomorrow. Um, it's anyone's guess what it is. They could be calling it to, to refute this um, rumor or analysts I sp spoke to in Accra are telling me that they might be revising upwards the monetary policy rates again. So we'll see what uh, the outcome of that emergency meeting. It's an emergency meeting because it's not in line with the, um, the calendar where they normally, normally meet. And then uh, you already talked about him, but um, you know, William Ruto, president-elect Kenya, here he is praising the electoral commission. Of this election is the IEBC, led by Wapula I say this with conviction that the IEBC amazed all of us. With the results in the public portal, 
The, all the servers were open. Yeah. Everybody, all you needed is a simple calculator. And you would have the results. I want to congratulate the IEBC for bringing the All right, so there he is praising the Electoral Commission in Kenya. Rufa already went through this, the transparency, yeah. the data. The, so the, the server. Yeah. I, yeah. I, think, I think the server thing was a game changer. You know, Chibakati put it all out there. Put it out there. And you, can, you, can, you can get the server. It was real time. Yeah. It was not like some partnership with some Corvette organization, but everybody could get it. Just there. So you were just uploading real time. And I think Annex even do that. Annex even. They kind of did it with the Obaseki, yeah, those state governor, yeah, the gubernatorial wedding. I Annex even, you know, have. Media houses have the APIs. So that we can... Yeah, so we can data. integrate. Yeah. So, but real quickly, I want to talk about inflation. Yes. It's staring at us on inflation. I think inflation, personally, is more than that. Right. Of course it is. It is more <laughs> than what we're seeing. Right. And, and I think we have not just gotten empirical models enough. Because there's no how you can tell me that the real cost of commodities are on the increase. Mm. And it's so alarming that when you go buy chicken this week... The next week is like that real increase. Mm. And you're telling me that it's 19 Porsche. I, I think it's way more than that. And let me even extrapolate because you see, and I please, I beg all the surrogates that are talking during this political campaign season. Yeah. Please tell people the truth and don't make stupid illogical arguments. It's, it's dirty. Right. Very dirty. A surrogate was speaking yesterday and say, if not for the policy of rice, that the inflation will have been higher than that because, because we stopped importation of rice... Mm. That's why inflation is still hovering at 19%. I'm like, what the heck? How many people are even getting Nigerian rice in the first place? Right. What is the cost? What's the CPI of rice? And rice is not the only, only commodity mm. we consume. So how available is Nigerian rice in the market? Because if the rice policy worked, you might have stopped importation, but what's the knock-on effect on price? Because if it's that competitive and like they claim, oh, there's rice everywhere. Yeah. Or let me use the word of a certain senator that said, rices. <laughs> Just kidding. You yeah, know. <laughs> if if <laughs> there are rices everywhere, yeah. we should have a knock-on effect on the drop in price of rice. A great example is telecoms. Mm. Once competition came into the telecoms market in the early 2000s, you remember how tariffs used to be high? Yeah. And they yeah. dropped. So if you say rice, your rice policy is a success, it's one hedging inflation. No. What's increasing inflation are legacy issues that people can't even get commodities from one part to another. But if the rice policy truly worked, the price of rice should go down. Mm. If rice is surplus and everywhere in Nigeria, I don't see why we can't buy rice for less than the price it is today. So the true test of the policy is in the price, price of rice. Price. If price of rice drops, I will carry a placard and say the policy worked. Inflation. 19.64%, up from 18.6%, right? Yeah. Yep. Food inflation, now 28.22%. Alarming. Yeah. Rural inflation, also 20. over 19%, yep. Yep. about 19 point uh, uh, something percent. Point two two. Yeah, okay. Yep. So there you have it. The reality of it is that life is very difficult. Mm. Prices are changing every week, mm. right? <laughs> now you measure this in terms of poverty. Yeah. What I refer to as uh, empty pockets. <laughs> pandemic of empty pockets. Oh, pandemic. Sorry, of, uh, pandemic of empty, empty pockets, uh, pockets yes. that yes. all of us are, are dealing with. Yeah. But the question to ask is, what is government doing about it? Aha. We run an import-dependent economy. We import everything, including toothpick. Even women import uh, hair. You know, the, the hair business is a, it's a big uh, issue. But don't let's talk about that. I can give a whole lecture on the uh, yeah, yeah. you know, important, uh, yes, uh, important uh, hair, hair. Yeah. You know, and yeah. the cost of it and the implications yeah. for relationships, <laughs> which is a very, uh, uh, you know, uh, yes. favorite topic yes. for you. So you have this. But what we have to worry about yes. is how do we make this economy productive? Mm. Yeah. If you are importing everything, your economy is unproductive right. and uh, you, uh, forex uh, management is an issue. What we're dealing with is economic mismanagement. And people should stop giving the excuse about, oh, uh, it is happening all over oh, the yeah, world. Yeah, exactly. and all of that. Yeah. We have a leadership issue at the core of it. And if this inflation continues to go up, where are we heading towards? Mm. The destination of Lebanon wow. or the destination uh, of Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka yeah. or to come home? Sierra Leone, mm. last week yeah. in Sierra Leone, over 10 persons died mm. because the Sierra Leoneans said, look, life is too difficult. Mm. They trooped to the streets. Cost of living crisis. Yeah. 
I hope that we do not get to a point in Nigeria where we will have a cost of living crisis protest mm. on the streets of Nigeria. The universities are shut down. Bread has become uh, very expensive. You know, everything has become... Relationships have become so expensive, to quote you again, <laughs> that uh, bachelors, you know, like you, are running away, <laughs> you know, from uh, entering into any serious relationship because of uh, inflation. Correct. Uh, you brought the story. I did, uh, I did. So that is how serious the situation is. And yet we have politicians, yeah. we have political leaders who want to be president of Nigeria, they are not talking about ideas. Thank you, doctor. Mm -hmm. Nobody Thank is you. talking about what they will do about this CPI crisis that we're dealing with. Mm. So these are the things we should be focusing upon. I don't want to hear, uh, yeah, I want to be chairman of the party by force. Uh, uh, you know, uh, people are leaving APC to join PDP. What are those concrete ideas mm. before the pandemic of empty pockets, you know, takes its uh, toll mm. on all of us? Mm. Don't worry, you can get yourself somebody like me. Ah. I wear my own hair ah. six, seven soon months you, in a row until I need a break. We're more really cost effective. <laughs> I'm <laughs> very cost effective. Thank you very much. Yes. 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 Yes.